but could you explain your role in the Kansas City, Missouri School District during the years between 1971 and 1997? Yes, my role in the Kansas City, Missouri School District during the years of 1971 and 1997 um, included being a senior because I graduated in 1971 from Central High School. But if I was to speak prior to that, I was a part of the class of 1968 when busing occurred again in Kansas City, Missouri School District. Um, I was one of the students that was bused to, to Westward High School from Central High School. And my class had an opportunity. We were bused to Westport, cent um, Southeast, and East. And I believe a few of them might have gone to Lincoln. Um, we were bused for one year initially, but told that if we wanted to return the next year that our parents could ask for a transfer back. Many of us uh, returned to Central High School to, glass to graduate with our class of 1971. However, prior to that, um, when I was in the fifth grade, I attended Linwood Elementary School. Um, during that time, Richardson was built, and so we spent half of the year at Linwood, and then um, we were transferred over to Catherine B. Richardson in the sixth grade. Some of my classmates who were attending Sanford B. Ladd were transferred to Humboldt during that time. So the interesting part of that story is that while they were really uh, being busted during the time of desegregation, they did not bust the white children to the black schools, they bust the African-American black children to the white schools. Um, and they were still separate. I don't know how equal it was because they tell stories about um, being, ha uh, being separated during recess time where many of them would have an opportunity to go outside for recess, but they didn't play together on the playground. And my friend told me of one particular incident where they went out and the schedule was confused and they were trying to figure out why the African-American children were out at the same time as the, black, as the white children. So that was just kind of interesting to hear those conversations um, about the teachers, even though that they were bused to those schools, they did not have white teachers, they had African-American teachers. So it was still um, blacks teaching blacks and being with blacks and whites teaching whites and being with whites. So I don't know how separate and equal that was, but it did occur. So fast forward back to when I went to Westport in 1968, um, I remember that was my first opportunity in having a teacher who was not of color. Um, I remember my math teacher, I um, remember my music teachers, I remember the opportunities that I had at Westport, even in courses that were not offered at Central during that time. So there was a difference in what was being taught on one side of the district and the other side of the district. I remember what our textbooks looks like, looked like. At that time, we could not wear pants to school. And I remember that we decided on the last day that we weren't going to wear pants, but we were going to wear culottes. You know, that was just, you know, pushing the window a little bit. It was like if we had to debate it, we would say, well, we don't have on pants. Well, needless to say, we weren't allowed in school that day. And so the only way that we could return to class was by having uh, the proper attire, which would have been a skirt or a dress or whatever. Um, I also remember during the time that was the time of the riots in 68, um, we were located on 39th Street, so of course the alarm was there for what was going on with demonstrations in the city and how that impacted us. Um, I completed my year at Westport in 1968 and then returned to Central in 69 to graduate with my class in 71. So that's a little bit about how I went from not only um, being a student during that time in 71, in the period in which we're talking about, but a little history of what happened prior to 71 and being a student during that time. Um, I left Kansas City for a short period of time, went on to college, taught on the other side of the state, and then returned in 1978. And ironically, I was able to teach in four of the buildings that I had attended. Um, I taught between um, 1978 and 1997. I taught at uh, Central Junior High School, taught at Westport High School. Um, I taught um, night school or supervised night school at Central High School and um, was able just to give back to the community and see how things had changed during that time. Uh, some of the teachers who were there during the time I was there 
we're still there. Um, and still working in the district, so it, it was just you know a cool feeling to be able to work with those that I had admired throughout the years. Well, for those schools, um, it was majority African American, so there wasn't any change. We didn't see an influx of uh, children who were not of color during that time. Where I saw the most diverse group was at Westport High School. That was during the time when we were uh, receiving a lot of students from other countries. And so because many of them lived on the west side, we had a higher population of Hispanic children and Viet Vietnamese children who attended Westport. So I began to see the culture change in that particular building just simply because where it was located and the children were still transported by buses. Well, I believe with the um, looking at the structure of the school system um, with the busing, that was one of the things. But again, remember, I didn't see so much of it be being reversed. I didn't see children from Southwest being transferred to Central. I didn't see um, a lot of the children from East being transferred to Central. And when you think about the pockets in which those schools were located, it, it was in the neighborhoods where um, African Americans were there. You might have seen, uh, might have seen a few of them, but you didn't see a lot of busing going on. Again, with white children being bused into the African American schools, so I didn't see um, at Central, at Central Junior. I didn't see those uh, cultures changing in those schools. They continued to have a high percentage of African American children. What I can remember is the conversations in my, in my home as it related to why we were being bused. Um, I know that there was conversations um, in community meetings, the PTAs or whatever, about what was happening to um, the young people in the community. Some of the social action groups were uh, beginning to voice their opinion of, you know, were we going to have an equal opportunity to education as everyone, as everyone else? Uh, but what did that look like? What, you know, how do you define equal? You know, is it textbooks? Is it instruction? Um, you know, are we going to see a cross-representation of children in those buildings? And so those dialogues were being held, but as a child, remember during that time, I'm still trying to figure out, you know, why are we being bused? Um, I don't remember anyone from the district ever coming to our school and sharing with us that there was going to be a change for the next year. I don't remember town meetings being held, and maybe because I was too young to know what a town meeting was. Uh, but I, all I remember is the letter that we received and then the information that said that if you wanted to go back, that you could. Well, the attitudes of the staff and um, the students at that time regarding student integration um, was centered around um, who was going where, um, what the school was going to look like, uh, what classes they were going to be able to teach because I believe that there was um, a determination of if they were sending math teachers to teach in the schools that were predominantly white, if they were sending PE teachers because I think the ability or what they felt was ability level of the teachers coming in probably was questioned. And so I believe that there was probably a selection process and there's nothing that I could go back to bear that that is a true fact. But I can't believe that the dialogue wasn't held that said, what type of teachers are we going to transfer into these white schools? And who will they teach? Will we have black teachers teaching white children? It was OK at that time, I guess, to have white teachers teaching African-American or black children. But um, with all the questions coming about the caliber and if people were able to provide a quality education, I'm sure there were many conversations about what subjects would be taught and who would be on the other end of the teaching. Well, for the younger, for those who, of us who were younger, I, I remember being excited. It was like, I get to go to a new school. I'm going to Westport High School. Um, we had an opportunity to ride a school bus. That was something that hadn't happened in the past because we walked 13 blocks every day to school 13 blocks every day from school. So we would pick up young people along the way in the journey. So, you know, a difference of going to a new school, uh, riding a school bus, I don't think we thought at that time 
about what the real message was. It wasn't until we got over there and, re and realized that it was a different culture, uh, the expectation was different, we weren't treated the same way that we were treated at our home school, and pretty much that and many of the friends that we had grew up with from elementary, elementary through high school were still back at our home-based schools and we were being separated. I believe I contributed to school integration by, uh, first of all, having the opportunity and experience of being a part of the integration process. Um, secondly, when I had an opportunity to go back and teach at those schools, I could give a history or tell and share stories about what had happened to me and my experiences in being there. And just trying to get the young people to understand that as a a society that we're going to work with different people throughout our lives and there's not going to be a segment where it's going to be uh, from that point forward all African American you know or all white population because the world was, change, was changing and that it was up to us to get as much as we could to be the best teachers that we could to the young people moving forward so they could be competitive in society. I returned in 78. I felt like the culture was different as far as what was expected. The acceptance part of teaching. Um, when I came back, I actually worked at an elementary school for a couple of years. And so um, I could see the difference in the community, you know, and the things that changed and that young people were being bused all over the city, um, not just to those schools that they had selected during the segregation piece. I believe there was more rigor in the curriculum. You had more choices. I began to see um, the same things offered from one school to the next, uh, a little bit of e equality on what was uh, being av made available to young people as it related to course offerings. Uh, there was a more of a push and during that time I was a part of the Project Choice program by Mary Ewan Kaufman, uh, Kaufman who provided a full ride of a scholarship to young people who completed uh, their education in four years. So there were opportunities for children of color uh, to be able to receive a college education without having to seek financial assistance. So even though the uh, resources were coming from the outside, I began to see a trend that was changing what was going on on the inside. Some of the social outcomes for students of school desegregation would have included an opportunity for them to have a more diverse population in which they were working with, uh, to learn that there were different people and that um, characteristic, characteristics are going to be different among different groups just simply because of their culture. So I believe it was a learning opportunity not only for them but for those that they came in contact uh, with. I believe there was an opportunity for them to uh, build relationships um, with others who were not from that community um, and then also to be able to experience something outside of their neighborhoods. I don't believe it has. I believe that we're still as segregated as we were back then. I think the tool that enables us to move forward at this point is that it's based on income and that we're segregated in our communities now based on income, not because of schools. I believe an opportunity to have the same type of exposure as you would in any school in this country would be a great opportunity for the young people in the greater Kansas City area. Um, I started out in the Kansas City, Missouri School District. Well, let me back up. I started out actually in the Columbia, Missouri School District. I taught there um, as a reading specialist and then moved to St. Louis where I worked in Ferguson, Flores, and also as a Title I reading specialist. In 1978, I returned to the Kansas City, Missouri School District where I worked in the elementary school um, at C.A. Franklin as a special education teacher. I actually taught in Kansas City for 13 years. Um, in the field of special education and regular education, working from elementary to secondary, with my last assignment being as a coordinator of project, a project at Southeast Middle School. 
I left the district in 1999 and went to the Hickman Middle School District where I became an administrator out there for residential programs working with Crittenden and Spofford um, and the state schools and then moved up to be director of special education. Um, moved from there to be an associate superintendent of schools and then the last 12 years in the district I served as a superintendent of schools. So 37 years in education, preschool through college has been my experience. So I've seen a lot of things go on, I've seen, I've seen a lot of changes take place and it's been very rewarding for me. I believe that history is repeating itself. I think it's coming from a different perspective now with charter schools. Um, being available to young people as we're moving forward. Um, I would like to see us have the conversation that this is Kansas City, um, that we're responsible for education, educating all children, and that all of our schools should be open to everyone who, has an who wants the opportunity to make a difference in their lives.